Okay, welcome back to a new Overleaf tutorial. Uh, in the previous video, I explained how you can actually open Overleaf, how you can create an account, how you can get access to certain features like the history, uh, how to, to share your article, at least I briefly mentioned that, um, how to um, get access to the file list and so on. And this is of course the fundamental basic, which you have to know. And now uh, I would like to explain how to add figures because this is the next step I think which you want to do when you write an article, a thesis and so on. But before we do that, uh, I would like to include another package here yeah, with this command use package in addition to what has been automatically created by Overleaf. Uh, and this is called blind text. Um, as I have also explained in my LaTeX tutorial, this you can use in order to create with the help of the new added command blind text um, you can create actually arbitrary text, which is then shown here in this PDF viewer on the right side. Uh, and this you can use, especially for testing certain features which you want to implement in your document. Yeah? You can insert this, of course, multiple times. And every time you see that uh, this text actually gets longer and longer. And this we will use now for testing uh, the insertion of our figure. So um, yeah, then in the next step, uh, if we want to really um, work with figures, we have to insert another package called uh, graphics yeah, with X at the end. Um, then we can compile it to see that there is no error coming. Yes, this means that uh, this um, package is actually available. And this is very important because without this, it will not work. And then of course, um, after doing that, we have to tell Overleaf what kind of figure we want to use. Yeah? So uh, of course, Overleaf is running on a server. So we have to get somehow our figure to the server. And this we can do uh, by pressing here on this upload button, as I have briefly mentioned last time. And uh, yeah, then you can have several options. A few of them I will explain very soon, but one of the most important one is that you want to upload a figure. And this you can do by clicking on uh, select from computer. And then you can see here, I've already uh, prepared a figure called test.png. Um, and this I have just downloaded from Wikipedia. It's just a test picture. And now we want to open that. And you see now it appears here on the left side in this uh, file list. And now, after uh, after it is there, we can now include it into our text wherever we want to have it. So for example, here between these blind texts, um, and then we can write here, include graphics. And you see uh, Overleaf also has an auto completion. It shows you already which kind of commands are there. It even gives you a suggestion, include graphics test.png, which we can use. Uh, so it automatically inserts this test.png exactly on that position here. Of course, you can also write the command by hand, but sometimes it's easier to use this auto-completion. Now you see this test image is now appearing here, but the size is absolutely not fitting according to our page. So what we can do, we can actually uh, change the width with the help of this uh, rectangular brackets. And we can write here, for example, width equal five centimeter. And now you can see that the picture appears here and the width has been uh, decreased to five centimeter. However, uh, the height has been proportionally scaled to that, which is of course maybe what you want. You can also manually change this additionally by writing comma height equal, um, for example, also uh, five centimeter. And when you recompile this document, then you see that now uh, the picture is not to scale anymore. Yeah? The height and the width do not match each other. You can also artificially increase that to a much larger value. And then you see uh, it's somehow disturbed. So usually you only want to set one, the height or the width of the picture, not both together. Yeah? Okay, now we have uh, added our figure. Uh, what is also possible um, if you want to adjust it to the according to the width of, our, of the document, you can also write here width equal uh, text width and then you see that uh, the width of the figure is exactly uh, the same as the width of our text here or you can also write a number in front which is larger uh, smaller than one for example 0 0.5 which means now uh, the figure has the width of the 50 percent of the text width actually yeah so this is a very very nice feature yeah, you can also um, you can also scale it, for example, uh, when you write scale uh, equal 0 0.5, it means that now uh, from the original width of the figure, uh, it, it takes only 50% into account, or you can reduce this maybe even to 20%, it gets smaller. 
What you can also do, you can rotate your figure. In some cases, maybe it is not necessary. So you can write here uh, angle equal 45, for example. And when you then compile it, you see that now we have this uh, 45 degree rotation of the figure. Then one trick which I normally like to use because it makes your document a little bit more, uh, yeah, more easy to read. And this is uh, by creating a new folder, yeah, which I call, for example, figures or images or something like that. And then I'm shifting this figure into this folder here. Yeah. So now you can actually close this folder and uh, all the images are hidden, which makes the file list a little bit more clean. And then what we can also set here in addition, or which we have to set in addition, is uh, the graphics path, as you can see here. And for this, we have to use two curly brackets, actually, not only one. And then we can here insert the uh, path figures into that. And when we compile that, now you can see it works. It automatically recognizes that this picture test.png is in this path and uh, shown here. Yeah. If you rename this path, of course, maybe to figures two, you will see it will not work anymore because Overleaf doesn't know where to find the figure. So we have to make sure that every path or every folder which we create here is included here in our graphics path. Then another important feature is that you can uh, wrap text around the figure. Let's suppose you have a small figure and you just don't want to waste space. So you could, for example, uh, create an um, environment here called wrap figure and wrap figure. And then we have to uh, say where this uh, picture shall actually be positioned, for example, on the left or on the right side. Let's suppose R for right and L for left. Uh, and this we have to actually, uh, yes, this is correct. And uh, then we have to uh, say how much large this figure sh should be, for example, 25% of our text width. And the same we can also then insert here, um, width equal 0 0.25 text width. And when we compile that, you see that we get an error message, of course, because for that you need another package called uh, repfig. Yeah, it has the same uh, the same name as the um, as the environment that we are using, at least almost. And when we compile that, you see now our figure is uh, actually positioned there. Maybe we can make it a little bit larger, 30% uh, of the text width. And now you see that the text is actually wrapped around. This is a very nice feature, but sometimes this is not what you want. You want to have it in the center. So for this, we use the figure environment. Yeah? And now again, we include our uh, our figure here uh, and we say again it should be maybe uh, 0.5 50% of the text width yeah uh, yeah this figures we can remove here because we have already set the graphics path and then you can see that uh, actually uh, when you when you write it like this um, the auto completion of overleaf automatically uh, creates this environment here so the figures should be centered uh, the name of the figure is given here. We can insert a caption. For example, um, this is only a test figure and we can give a label to that. Uh, for example, yeah, just test. And when we now compile it, you can see that uh, now our figure appears here um, yeah, at, at the top of our page because it is a floating environment now, which means that LaTeX automatically positions the pig figure where it thinks it should be. What you can try is to control that. Maybe in rectangular brackets, you can write an edge behind that for here. And then you will see that LaTeX uh, tries to figure, position it exactly on the place where we add this. Yeah? Uh, we can also write, for example, HBT, which means that either the figure will be positioned here or if it does not fit, it will be positioned on the bottom of the page or if this is also not possible on the top of the page. And now we can actually run this and you can see everything works very well. Our figure appears in the correct position. So uh, now another thing uh, which we can now use because we have now defined our label here, we can actually write some text here. Uh, this is a reference to figure and then we can write here uh, ref in curly brackets, fig test. Uh, this is the same label which we have given here. And now uh, in this condition, when we uh, zoom in a little bit to find where we have written that, and now I also have to uh, find it here. Yeah, it's now written here. 
Uh, this is a reference to figure one. So the number in the text here is automatically updated according to the figure which we have put here. And this is an advantage because if we insert any figure uh, above that, then the, the numbering will change, but the numbering in the text will change accordingly. So we will always have um, the advantage that we will never lose track as long as the label here in this figure environment is the same as the one which we have given here for the reference. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I hope that uh, that uh, this was uh, this was understandable what I explained now. I don't want to explain too much at the same time, so I think now this is a good uh, point to break. You have learned now how to how to upload figures, how to put them into folders, how to insert them into your text, including a caption, uh, which is shown here, including uh, a label that you can add, which you can then uh, reference in the text. And this is in principle everything what you need. When you know that, then you can create any single document, whether it's a thesis or a paper, uh, exactly in the same way. You only have to add more and more figures according to your need and your wish. Yeah? Okay, this is, uh, as I said, everything what I want to explain in this video. I hope that you liked it and enjoyed it. Uh, if you like the video, as usual, please hit the like button. Please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And if you don't want to miss any further video. And hopefully see you soon for next video.